How's it going, everyone? It is Tuesday, June 11th, 2024. Let's get into the video. No pick from the last video. I did call out a couple of call credit spreads, some put credit spreads, if you were looking to get into selling some premium during this time. Let's take a look at our open positions, and then we'll take a look at the market. So we have the WDC put credit spread still in good shape, still has been grinding higher, been testing uh, this high a couple of times here. So if we break out to the upside, um, that is perfect really for a put credit spread. Um, we can take a profit on that. So no action needed here. With put credit spreads, I really like to see one, is there any news coming up on the stock? And then two, do I have to take any action today? So far, WDC has told me that you have not needed to take any action so far. Uh, Liberty, 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 Liberty. Uh, not to be confused with the jingle. Let's zoom out here on Liberty first. So we have this D1 chart. Again, breakdown. We're just digesting some of the gains, holding the breakout. And we have this slight bearish channel coming up over here. If I look at the M30, um, you can sort of see this channel coming into play. Let's see if uh, it looks valid here. But we are holding all of these gains. I think I would draw it something like that. Um, it seems pretty valid. Holding all these gains. So a little bit horizontal here as well. Um, again, this this 2075 level has seemed to have a little bit of support, but we're not able to get anywhere uh, with the uh, stock or the market. So both are relatively flat, but given that the stock D1 chart is so bearish, I do think that sellers are going to return. We might need a little bit of a pullback uh, to get some dip buyers or some bottom pickers excited before we flush out to the next level. It does look like institutions have some liquidity at both these ranges. But the market is also not doing anything. We don't have any market tailwind to bias us in that favor. So Liberty is pretty flat right now. Um, but given that the market is pretty neutral, I do think that this stock is going to continue uh, to drift lower. I'm just going to be patient with this. Um, what I would do is if you are swinging it, um, feel free to take some chips off the table, right? Feel free to, if you entered a, with a full swing position here, I'd take off maybe half of the swing, um, right? Given that we have an event coming tomorrow, given that the move has not produced as quickly as we thought it would, it makes me slightly less bearish, but still bearish given that the fact that the D1 chart is intact. So uh, those are two positions. We're relatively balanced. We are... Um, you know, don't have a ton of positions open right now to manage. So uh, that's where we want to be at going into these news events tomorrow. So D1 chart over here. I'm going to just delete that blue line for right now. That's an intraday line. So uh, the market, if we look at over here, so these were the prior, the blue box are the prior unemployment releases. But if we look at the market here, it has been in kind of this wide bullish pattern. I've been trying to get a sense of what sort of channel it could be in. There could be some a wide bullish channel forming here. Uh, we could have a potential wedge forming over here. It may break out one way or the other. Um, I'm not really quite sure, but what I do know is that we are sort of in a slow bullish pattern. Um, every time we break out to a marginal new high, right? Breakout, no follow through, retracement, breakout, no follow through. I think, you know, depending on what the CPI and uh, the the Fed say I don't think they're going to change it too much unless CPI comes in way over expectations, like super hot or super cold. Um, that could be uh, bearish or bullish, regardless, or you know, um, bearish or bullish, bullish kind of accordingly to what I said. In terms of the FOMC, unless the Fed has a you know they move up their rate cut timeline. Um, or they announce more rate cuts this year, then that's the only sort of bullish catalyst I see for asset managers. Other than that, if inflation is going to be pretty stubborn, I think they're going to hold the line here because they have no reason to increase um, any rate cuts. This is very likely the terminal rate, um, but we haven't had any signs of easing. The market has priced in easing far sooner than what the Fed is suggesting. Um, and new revisions suggest that may not even be until post-elections that we could see the first rate cut. So 
Uh, so far, the inflation data coming into the first half of the year has shown that it's been low, it hasn't been high, but it hasn't been going down as fast as what the markets expected, as maybe what the Fed would hope for. So they want to keep this level as long as the economy is doing okay. Uh, the ISM services came in back in expansion territory, which is very good. So that dip uh, in the prior month where we were in contraction territory seems to be a one-off for right now. Unemployment has been pretty strong, um, or I guess the employment has been pretty strong. Unemployment has been pretty low at that 4%. It's been between the 3.8 to 4% mark, so hasn't shifted one way or the other. We got some volatility that day, uh, but by and large, didn't really move the market too much. Here's that June 7th. Here's that day on the market. Nothing too crazy. A little bit of volume coming in, but that's about it. So our longer term fundamental bias, mildly bullish. Um, you know, I don't see inflation is coming down, but it's slow. Um, the economy is still looking decent, not as, you know, not as humming as it once was, but we're waiting uh, to see just kind of what the next set of releases are going to be. Um, you know, China just taking it one release at a time. There's been no major bearish signs, right? There's no credit crisis. China real estate is still holding up okay, as far as we can tell. Um, you know, bank stocks are looking good. That's the first sign of a, of a credit threat. So, you know, no major kind of credit events, black swan events we can't predict, but, um, you know, no major events such as that. So it's really sort of just a waiting period. And like Pete's saying, letting the valuations of the stock or letting the earnings catch up to the valuations uh, of the different stocks. So um, it's maybe a waiting game um, and asset managers are not going to be chasing here. They might feel that these stocks are appropriately valued and they're going to buy in on these dips where they can get a much better value. Uh, and that'll be that boost up to the next level. So shorter term market bias, let's zoom into an M30 chart. I think this is pretty helpful. So we had this strong move up, this reversal from the bottom continued for a couple of days. Uh, and then after that reversal, the past couple of days, we have been flatlined, right? Market has been chopping around um, from about 532.50 to about 535, 536-ish. It's been chopping around this level, $4 range. So um, not a ton of movement here. We want to keep it light. Uh, you can day trade either side. So if you know that this is going to be a range bound structure, so I'd maybe let's put that support now somewhere here. I think that's more valid. If you know there's going to be a range bound structure, you can look for support at the bottom of the range and get in longs. You can look for resistance at the top of the range and get in relatively weak shorts, and then you sell uh, into that strength. So the middle of the range is where you want to be a little bit more careful. Zooming in intraday, what the heck's going on? So if we look at yesterday here, we had this gap down, tested the bottom of the range, came back all the way up, tested the top of the range. Okay, so that was a nice, decent bullish trend day in, an, in sort of an inside range day, given that we we're at the bottom of the range. Gap down, probe for support. Sellers were overreaching a little bit, and then buyers stepped in. They got a good price. We got some decent price action uh, for the first half of the day, and then it pretty much just died out into some choppy garbage later in the day. So today, I think we're going to see a similar thing. We have a probe down to support. Now, this is a far stronger probe, very, very fast, some decent volume, but then an equally strong snapback over here into the middle of the range. Try to fill in the gap here, uh, but we're getting this double top forming, and now we're pulling back towards VWAP. So uh, I think this would be a, a decent opportunity to take some day trade shorts. We got this 1OP uh, bearish cross forming. Now with 1OP, we had this bullish divergence coming up over here. So we had this bullish divergence um, right over here. So you could have taken some longs, but this ended up being a benign bullish cycle. We're getting our bearish cross here again, and then we get the price action confirmation with this double top, uh, lower high, or maybe double top equal high, I guess, uh, about the same height. So I think this day is probably going to be dying on a vine. Um, if I'm being honest, I think we're going to see some choppy, chunky price action. 
I think you had some moves perhaps earlier in the day. There may be some setups later in the day in terms of pullbacks or compression breaks at the lower high of the day. But other than that, I think you want to keep it light. So if we look at some other options, the, the type of trades you want to take are day trading, uh, you know, grinding out some wins, selling into strength. Um, you can take both the long and the short side. Earnings time spreads, which are market neutral. I looked at the earnings time spreads today. Nothing very appealing right now. Um, this is not a crazy earnings season. Uh, so there's not going to be a lot of opportunity uh, for this week and probably the next two or three weeks until we start to kick off to JPM and bank earnings. So day trades, earning time spreads, and some premium selling strategies. That could be put credit spreads, that can be weekly at the monies, that can be naked puts. So all of those work pretty well. Um, let's look at some day trades here. I tagged a couple of picks for day trades. And um, I am, uh, let's look at the strongest picks today. Uh, first one is Apple. So Apple, I took a nice win. And actually this earlier in the morning, um, I got this uh, HA reversal alert at 1120. You can see that first Apple on the D1 chart, extremely strong breakout. There is a news catalyst that had the WW DC yesterday, breaking it to a new all-time high through this short-term channel um, and through a lot of these major trend lines over here uh, around this, you know, 197, 200 level. So lots of relative strength coming into Apple and Apple does not make huge moves like this, right? This is super orderly price action, extremely heavy volume, right? Our volume of five, tiny pullback, next leg higher. So I knew that Apple is keeping in this trend. Um, I knew that, hey, look, I'm going to get in this pullback. And given that the market is having a pretty dead day, I'm going to sell into strength and look to take a dollar. So uh, that's what I did. And there's still a potential for Apple to do pretty well later in the day. What alerts I've set here is uh, a HA reversal alert and an LRSI alert. So depending on what the market does here, if Apple pulls back a little bit, um, you can see on these levels, it'll break out over here and it'll test this prior high. So if I were to draw a line right here, right here is uh, the kind of the, the prior high from this last leg up. Let me change this color. Let me, let's me let maybe make it blue. Okay, so test this prior high, broke through here, came back, retesting this level. Um, we may get an HA reversal here, but um, if not, what I would do is catch it in three ways. HA reversal, or it's able to break above this short-term high here. We, I'm assuming the high of the day is not quite in until we see any sort of decent market retracement or decent stock retracement. So Apple is the long pick of the day. And it is the long pick because if you look at what's happening in the sectors, every sector is red except tech. And if we look at tech, most of tech is weak except consumer electronics. What's leading consumer electronics? It is our good friend, Mr. Apple. Apple is also one of the biggest weighted uh, stocks in the market, $3 trillion market cap. Um, if it's going to show it over here. Oh, here it is. Okay. Where's our market cap? Over yeah, three, three, $3 trillion market cap. So this thing is what is keeping the market alive for the time being. Everything else is very, very weak. So um, that is our pocket of relative strength. So Apple Long, that's one potential setup. I would take it on an LRSI pullback or an HA reversal. Uh, second one that I like that is a little bit less bullish but still pretty nice is ARM. So ARM has been in this nice bullish trend here. D1 chart isn't super great, but it has some nice uh, short-term momentum. And we have some room until this level here around 150. So um, as long as the market is okay or it's decent, I think ARM is going to continue to grind up higher. You can see earlier in the day when the market had a gap down, was probing for support, ARM was flat and started to grind up higher. Now, it is in this bullish channel. We want this channel to be, be preserved. So if it's unable to be preserved, um, then we want to be a little bit more cautious. The stock could be flatlining for the rest of the day. I would get in on the stock on some sort of HA reversal or an LRSI pullback. So those are the two alerts that I have set here. I'm also going to set an alert at the halfway point of this candle. 
So I don't want to buy at the high of the day. I want to buy when it can kind of confirms some market strength. Uh, you can see here how this is the breakout level. So that's that last high. Now it's looking like it's testing this high right here. Now, if it doesn't test this high, I'll probably, it's probably going to test this low uh, from over here. So these are our mini levels where we know that there's going to be a little bit of action coming into play. And uh, we want to see what uh, ARM does here. Again, th three steps up, two steps back. It pulls back to this 8 EMA. And if you get it at this 8 EMA, you're really entering at a very favorable price uh, to get that next leg higher. So what you want to see for ARM, you want SPY to hold above VWAP. So we want to see a couple of tails below body. We want to see ARM hold this level. We don't really want it to see a ton of retracement uh, back below. If it holds and stalls this level for a couple of bars, and then we get a nice couple of green bars, a flat bottom HA candle here, then we can get back into the trade and we can ride that move up and sell it into strength. So you have to be very precise with your entry on ARM. Um, you want to be very careful with the market. This trade could set up, but it really feels like it's likely to maybe not set up. So um, throwing that one out there, let's look at CLF. So CLF has made a really big move today um, in the past couple of days and continues to just absolutely tank um, from June 5th. Moving down here and it is compressing at the low of the day. So as long as it can't get off the deck, we're going to see that next leg lower. But we want to see this high hold over here, right? We have buying and sellers fighting at this point. If we get a decent retracement above this high, and VWAP is probably coming into play over here, get a decent retracement above this high, uh, okay, then I'm not as crazy about CLF. Something that the trend is uh, probably done for today. Might have to get in on another day. APTV is probably going to be my short day trade of the day. So let's look at this on a couple of different charts. <clears throat> so first on the D1 chart, we got this post earnings move here, long compression, double top, rejected off a couple of trend lines, rejected off of the 200-day SMA. Today, it has cracked through both of its SMAs as well as the five-day low uh, into this earnings candle. Uh, and plenty of room to the bottom of this earnings candle. There's maybe a potentially a little bit of minor resistance here coming into play at $76. And if I looked at the D1 chart here, it's really from these high volume candles here and this prior void. Um, that could be a little bit of support. You can see how we test that level a couple of times over here. And it's provided uh, some minor support. So it could stop us intraday. Um, so that's a minor level to watch for, but if we break through that, then we definitely have a, a far more clear shot um, all the way down to about 74 bucks. So APTV is nice. Right now, it's trying to confirm the break of its SMA. So the SMA is right here. I guess here is the the five-day high, it looks like. Oh, I'm not sure where the five-day low is. Or maybe that is the five-day low, or I guess that's the ATR move, I think. In either case, we're testing the SMA, and we're trying to confirm this break. So I have an alert at the low of the day. If APTV breaks through the low of the day, uh, gets some decent volume here, then I feel comfortable going short uh, as a day trade. And you know, you could probably take, if you can take 50 cents on a stock of, of a two, a two ATR stock, uh, it's a pretty decent move. So uh, that's probably gonna be my short pick of the day. APTV, if it can break through its low of the day and ARM, as long as it continues to hold uh, this level right here and on an HA reversal. So let me uh, put those in our YouTube picks here. So that'll be it for the day. Um, no overnight positions over here. Um, what I'm doing today is one marking, I've searches for strong and weak D1 stocks. I'm going to mark and set alerts on all strong, uh, D1 charts. And then on my PCS searches, I'm going to look through all of them, see how they're doing, see if any candidates are setting up, uh, for put credit spreads. So that way I know which stocks to go to in the event of an FOMC move on either direction. So 
Uh, have your list of good D1s ready, which this has to be updated, as well as stocks with PCS potential. Um, and you will have a lot of picks uh, potentially coming up tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll take a look at what's happening with the CPI, the FOMC, and some picks on tomorrow's video.